Hey, I'm Lauren from tastypc.tv. Today I'm taking a look at Enamax's brand new liquid cooling solutions. So there are three variations, but I'm going to be looking specifically at the ELC120 and the ELC240. Um, I'm going to be taking a look at these over two videos. In this video, I'm going to be doing kind of an unboxing slash overview. And in the next video, I'm going to be testing their performance and seeing how they compare against the H100. So it will be interesting to see where they place. So let's get started. So if I start by taking you through a look around the box of the 120mm version, this is the ELC120 um, and it comes with a TDP of 250 watts plus. Um, it can also support pretty much any CPU socket you're going to be using and it comes in two fan variations, either with TB silence fans or a polish LED fans. Turning the box on its side, um, we've got the package contents, the fact that it comes with a two year warranty um, and the NMAX have worked with AVC to bring you this cooler. Taking a look at this side of the box, we've got some of the features highlighted. So NMAX say that it's got an easy install smart bracket, um, it's got three cooling modes, which I will talk to you about later. And then in my opinion, the most important feature, the cold plate design. So NMAX are using what they like to call the quad shunt channel cold plate. Um, and this is supposed to increase heat transfer from the CPU while limiting hotspots. Um, and this is what NMAX say makes this cooler superior to other all-in-one solutions available. Um, basically, with normal cold plate designs, um, the liquid moves in relatively straight lines across the CPU. However, with this design, it kind of like branches out, creating turbulence, which in theory helps with heat transfer. So, if I then show you the back of the box, um, if I just zoom you in a little bit. So, here we've got the dimensions. The Ray GR is 32mm thick, and with a fan on each side, it's 82mm thick. Here we've got the performance graph. I'm not going to pay a lot of attention to this because I am going to be doing my own performance tests in my next video. Here we've got the specs of the cooler, and this is a good chance to pause if you want to get time to read them. Um, and then we've also got the specs of the two fans. Now, originally, I did assume that the TB silence fans would be lower spec than the LED fans um, because obviously they're the silence in the name. Um, but once actually looking at it, they outperform the LEDs in noise level, static pressure, and airflow. So um, on paper, if you want to go for performance, get the silence version. If you want to go for looks, get the LED version. So now I'm going to show you what comes inside the box. In the box, you get a user manual, the two fans, which I will talk to you about later, and all the fitting screws, back plates, and mounts that you need to be able to fit this to both AMD and Intel CPUs in either push-pull or push-pull configuration. And then lastly, you've got the ELC120 itself. So this offers you all the features you'd expect um, with plastic flexible tubing that pivots here. I really love how this cooler is powered and how you connect the fans. It's all on a single cable in a logical order um, and you can just plug this 3 pin into your motherboard and tuck these two connectors behind your motherboard tray. Um, looking at the radiator, it is a lot better quality than I expected. I am used to seeing the odd damaged fin but this one does look pretty much flawless. Um, looking at the base of the CPU block, it has already been foul pasted. Now, I know a lot of people prefer this when it's clean, but this is definitely a lot easier for beginners, and I know for them this is a definite positive. So, I'm now going to move on to the 240mm version. Starting with the box, this is the ELC240. It's pretty much exactly the same as the 120mm version, except obviously it comes with a 240mm radiator instead. Um, you don't get the choice between the two fan variations. And it also comes with a 5 year warranty instead of a 2 year warranty. So looking at the back of the box, um, if I just zoom you in a little bit, here we've got the dimensions. The radiator is also 32mm thick, but with the fans it's 57mm thick. Here we've got the performance graph, um, and according to Enemax's tests, the 240mm radiator performs about 5 degrees better than the 120mm version. So here we've got the specs um, of the cooler and the fans, and this is a good time to pause if you want to get a chance to read them. So now I'm going to show you what comes inside the box. Everything that comes in the box with the 240mm radiator is exactly the same as what comes in the box with the 120mm version, so I skip straight to the radiator itself. Now once again the build quality is much better than I expected it to be, Although there is one thing that I've noticed, um, and that's that there's a sizable gap between the fins and the outside of the radiator. So the radiator is actually much thinner than it originally looks. Um, and if I fit a screw, it shows you just how big the gap is. 
So in my mind, there's only two possible reasons for this. I think that either Enemax could be trying to decrease resistance on the fan, allowing increased airflow, or they're trying to make the radiator seem like it's thicker than it actually is. Um, but I will be exploring this in detail when I compare the ELC240 against the H100 in my next video. So what I'm going to do now is take a look at the fans that both the ELC120 and 240 come with. Taking a look at the included fans, these are the TB Silence ED12251-2H-PD. Um, and I have used fans from this series before, and I have to say they were amazingly quiet. Although, in the original smoke test that I did, I did test a fan from this series, um, and it was extremely unfocused, and not something that I'd recommend for radiators at all. Um, and the problem that it had was that the Enemax cutout around the edge kind of confused the um, airflow concentration, and although I know this is a different fan, it does have the same design, um, which does concern me a little bit. Although I do like the Enemax have braided the cable. So on the box it said one of the features this kit has is that the fans it comes with have got three cooling modes, um, and you control this by this little switch here. And the three modes um, is 1500 RPM, which is silent mode, 1800 RPM, which is performance mode, and 2200 RPM, which is overclock mode. Now, I am really impressed with the concept of picking your RPM on the actual fan, but I do think this has a major flaw. Um, because of the way I fit this to a radiator, and the majority of people fit this to a radiator, once it's actually there, it's kind of impossible to get through the blades to the switch, um, and it's going to be even harder getting to the sandwiched one on the ELC120. Um, so if you do want to go from, like, say, silent mode to overclock mode, you will have to remove the fan to do so, which, in my opinion, is a huge inconvenience. Um, and I do just see most people just keeping it on the highest setting and then using easier ways to manage it, like fan controllers or low noise adapters. Um, although I do really love the stealthy look of this fan, um, I much prefer it to some of the standard black fans that you get with these sort of kits. So I'm now going to move on to the conclusion. So that was my first look at the ELC240 and the ELC120. Enemax are going to be releasing a thicker 120mm radiator in November, the ELC125, so look out for that. So as soon as this video is uploaded, um, I'm going to start testing the kits and then compare them to the H100. So it will be interesting to see if something finally knocks Corsair off its throne. Um, and that video should be up this time tomorrow, depending on as long as it doesn't rain or not. Um, so that was my overview of Enemax's new liquid cooling solutions. If you liked the video, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.